The size of the stake uh, that you use to stake down your DK1 uh, is, is, is important. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of gophers that have been missed uh, because, uh, because of the size of the stake. I built a little holding fixture uh, to mount a trap in uh, just for the sake of taking this video. Uh, main reason is uh, I wanted to hold uh, the trap steady and I wanted to try to keep my fingers out of the video. So uh, right in this area here uh, I've got a little uh, extension on my fixture and on the uh, on that uh, extension I put a piece of uh, one inch thick steel and uh, what I want to do is illustrate um, the movement of this uh, trigger rod holding eye as the trap uh, goes shut. So just imagine now that this trap is set a, in a set hole and this surface, top surface here would be the uh, uh, top surface of the, uh, or the bottom, it would be the top of the bottom of the uh, set hole. So I'm going to remove that, I'm going to remove that piece. I've staked this trap down with a one inch pipe in the back here now. And uh, I want to illustrate uh, what happens if, uh, if your trap stake is too big. So the trigger is released and uh, we're going to start closing the trap now. Uh, this jaw here is part of the main frame. Uh, this jaw over on the left hand side, uh, that is hooked on to the uh, trigger rod support. So as the trap starts to close, Uh, this jaw here on the right hand side <coughs> hooked on to the uh, mainframe uh, we're getting an interference uh, condition back on the trap stake and this won't go any farther I mean that's a, that's as far as that jaw will close so then uh, if we're going to catch a gopher uh, the left hand jaw as you're uh, looking at it uh, has got to has got a swing down all the way around to close the trap because this jaw here is being restrained by the trap stake so as that jaw was making its arc pay attention to how close on the bottom it came if you remember right, we had a we had a one inch uh, high bar there, so that actually sweeps uh, that uh, trigger rod holding device actually swings down uh, one full inch from the where we started from. It's important that you make a uh, provision in your set hole for this uh, for this action. It's it's one full inch from beginning. To the bottom of the sweep. If you don't provide some relief in that area, what will happen is that this will hit the bottom of the set hole and it will raise the trap up. And when you raise the trap up an inch, there's a good chance that this jaw is going to get uh, is going to get hung up in the root system if you're trapping in the sod. What we're trying to do is to uh, uh, increase uh, the amount of rotation on the left jaw and the easiest way to do that is to uh, uh, reduce the interference um, uh, between the trap stake and the eye. And of course uh, just using a smaller trap stake uh, will help. You can get a lot more rotation with a smaller stake but uh, you can even uh, enhance that by putting a, uh, a little twist in the stake down eye so what I've done here is I've got the trap uh, in a vise uh, I'm holding it right at the uh, right at the bend line there and then uh, just take a 
just take an adjustable crescent wrench and put it over the eye and uh, we're going to be doing this in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, we want to end up with about a 45 degree angle. That looks good. So what that does for us now, the purpose of putting that uh, twist on the end of the eye is to uh, make it easier for the trap to tip over uh, and for that left jaw uh, to swing farther. So the farther we can get that left jaw to swing, uh, then the less the other jaw has to uh, uh, rotate uh, to complete the close the trap. When we're staking that trap down, if we put the trap stake at a little angle also, that will enable more rotation of the eye. So I think it's time that we record the results of uh, each of the different uh, stakes that we tried and the modifications. The first trial was uh, just a half inch pipe. The trap still had a, uh, a, a straight eyelet on the end. So I'm bringing that over to the point of uh, interference on the back. And then we'll uh, we'll take a little measurement here and uh, pull this deal off. Got about an inch or inch and a quarter here uh, between the center line and the uh, the left jaw, and that's with the uh, the half inch pipe, uh, no modification to the eyelet. Inch, inch and a quarter on the side, and that jaw. That's as far as that jaw will go. Uh, that, that won't close any farther. The second trial is with a 5 16 inch rod, uh, staking it down. Same trap, uh, same setup here in the front. Um, I'll pull that jaw over to the point of interference. Okay, that jaw is not going to close any farther. And yeah, then we'll take a measurement. There again, we'll line that up with the center line of the uh, spring. Well, we're not quite to the uh, center line of the spring with that, but uh, a whole lot closer than uh, the half inch uh, stake did. This trial, uh, we have the same trap. Um, the eye of the trap hasn't been modified, but we're putting a stake in. Uh, 5 16 stake. We're putting that stake in at an angle. So we'll check that out. Coming from this side, uh, you can see that that uh, just putting uh, the same setup. Same trap, uh, same stake, uh, putting the stake in at an angle. Um, looks like we gained about a half inch of closure on the, on the left jaw, which is a good thing. I took the trap over to the vise and uh, turned the eyelet uh, about 45 degrees counterclockwise. And now, uh, now the eyelet of the uh, trap doesn't really want to fit uh, uh, over the uh, half inch pipe. Uh, but you can see that uh, there's actually interference in keeping the trap straight. But anyway, uh, going the other way, uh, th that 45 degree uh, twist uh, has given us a marked improvement on the rotation. Uh, we're almost to the center line uh, of the uh, spring with the rotation.
uh, and the change, the only change was there is we did the uh, 45 degree uh, twist of the uh, eyelid. This trial uh, is also with the uh, uh, trap eyelet being turned counterclockwise about 45 degrees. So anyway, when we take this left jaw and pull it, uh, on the first trial, without having the tail, uh, without having the eyelet turned, we were about at uh, center line. And now, and now you can see that we're, uh, we've gained uh, quite a bit of rotation. So we've gained about, uh, looks like about three quarters of an inch of rotation uh, by uh, uh, turning the uh, trap eyelet uh, counterclockwise. In this trial we've uh, leaned the stake uh, to the right and this also trial also has the uh, eyelet of the trap uh, turned counterclockwise uh, approximately 45 degrees. So now this jaw now this jaw is way over here, uh, uh, probably uh, probably about two inches of, uh, on the other side of the center line. Uh, so in conclusion, I would say uh, it is important that this left jaw, uh, the one that's hooked onto the handle, be able to move. And uh, you can accomplish that movement by sizing the stake correctly and also doing a, a little modification um, to the eyelet on the trap itself.